Okay, so this video is going to be all about iris and aperture. Okay. Both of them. Are those things the same thing? They they kind of they're used interchangeable a lot, right? But they kind of they mean something different but the same. So iris refers to the actual uh, element inside the lens that is opening and closing. So it's a physical thing, a barrier that blocks light or allows light. Uh, like the iris in your eyeball. Exactly, that's yeah. where it comes from, right? So, um, and then the aperture refers to actually like how big that opening is. Okay. Um, and when it comes to cameras, we, we kind of use um, numbers to help us identify what, what aperture we need to be at. So this lens here, for example, is a 3.5 lens, meaning that the brightest it can get, or the widest the aperture can be is 3.5. That's referring to, again, the, the size of the opening of that, of that iris. So some lenses could be as, as, uh, as high as a 1.8, or even like a 1.5, and that'll be super bright lens. It can work with very little light in the room. Um, so it's really good for low light. Great for low light. Also great for, like, uh, for photography, because it really, the, um, the wider the aperture, which also means the lower that number, means the shallower your depth, your depth of field. So you can get a really soft background with a 1.8 lens, for example. That's all the new improvements to cell phone cameras. Yes, so yeah, when the iPhone releases a new camera, they always talk about what that aperture is. Um, and then they do things to trick it with like photo, with a portrait mode to give you that effect, right? Yeah. Um, some lenses, like the more zoom the lens has, often the, um, the higher that number is. So it may be a max of f4. So F is also like the, the short form of what we use when we talk about what the aperture should be. Um, so in a traditional photographic camera, that would be referred to as the F-stop? Right. Okay. The F-stop. Sometimes with a, with a video lens, it may be called the T-stop. Those are slightly different, but for our purposes, they're interchangeable terms. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so maybe it might be good just to kind of throw this camera up on the screen. We can see what it actually does. So again, it is that, get this in focus. It is that element inside the lens that's opening and closing. So when I spin this. I look this, really old, Lee. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're about to get a lot older. <laughs> uh, so when I spin this, I'm closing it. Inside the lens, the iris is closing, and it's just getting the, the image darker. Right? So this is how we set the exposure. It's one of the ways that we set the exposure. So that was like fully closed. Yeah. It's right basically now it's like putting a cap closed. on the lens. Exactly. You okay. can actually black, black balance your camera by just closing the iris. OK. I open it back up. We, get the, we let the light in, we can get our exposure set. And what's really nice about uh, video lenses is that you actually get markings on the lens here. So you may, you know, it's sometimes when we're in rehearsal, we'll know, hey, for this particular segment, we want that camera to be at 2.8 or at 3.5. Or we know for the talk, like the lights don't change for the talk, so we know that it needs to be at a certain level. So the director or engineer may tell your camera op, hey, can you make sure you're at 3.5? And you can just look on the side of the camera Look at the lens and see where you are. Or sometimes it'll even tell you on the monitor, the viewfinder or the monitor. Or if in the control room, if the director is monitoring camera to camera and he says yep. camera two, iris up, basically yep. what that means is you're opening the iris to let more light in. Exactly. So that it can match the rest of the cameras. Yep. Relative. Iris down is closing it up. And so you won't can, hear aperture up or change your f-stop. You'll hear iris. Mostly it's iris. It's just a short, shorter way of saying that. Okay. I'm um, keeping the, the language tight. And you can do this manually at the lens, um, or you can do it oftentimes in the control room. OK, so there's a lot of variability between totally closed. Like you said, you could use that to black balance because it's completely like putting a lens cap on. Right. But then you could also get to where it's overexposed. So how do you know what's right? Like, what are you looking for in terms of there's the sweet spot? Right. Well, it kind of depends on what, what you're shooting, right? So if I'm shooting a scene, like the, like the stage, and I have content on the LED wall, I want to expose for the LED wall. Um, if I have you know, maybe the band's not on stage yet, it's just an opening number. I want to make sure the lights feel like they're balanced with everything else that we see. So you got to figure out what are you trying to aim for so you know what to hit. But if we're talking about, like, skin tone or faces, um, if you have a scope, uh, like in your engineering room or your scope monitor, that'll help you figure out exactly where you need to be. You'll actually get a waveform, just like you would kind of in audio world, and that waveform will help, help you figure out where you need to land. But if you don't have that uh, kind of equipment, you also just eyeball it, right? I want to make sure in this image that your face, Jeff, is not overexposed. It's really unforgiving to have an overexposed skin tone. So it makes me look a lot worse. Makes, it makes you look washed out. There's yeah. like color in your face. You look kind of sick, right? So let's, let's make you look I healthy. don't need that. <laughs> We're just going to iris that down until we feel, um, until it feels like, a, like a, there's no area of the face that's being blown out. Um, there's no area that is getting too washed out. And so 
If you have the right equipment, it's really scientific. If you're just looking at monitors, you kind of have to eyeball it. So this is a balance between brightness of fixtures on stage, LED wall, front light, all that stuff's playing into this. All that stuff. And if, if you really have time, it's really good to work with your team to say, all right, let's bring that LED intensity down. Let's raise the key light. You know, sometimes the back the backlight is way brighter than the key and that, that doesn't play well with cameras. So it's all a team effort to make it look right. And is there any order to do that? Do you want to get lighting set first and then iris last? Or is it set your iris because you know what it is and then adjust all that? Usually, like, I mean, in my experience, designers want to be able to like, get their base looks, get their lighting set, and then let's see how it looks on camera. And if we need a tweak, let's tweak. Okay. And then does this have anything to do with um, how iris relates to color balance, or are those two things completely different? Like, if you change the white balance, then will it affect the iris and how it responds? Right. Not really. So that the color science or the color space of it is a separate issue than just how much light you're letting into the camera. So exposure Great. is how much light you're going to allow into the sensor and color is then how you're going to affect those colors. They're different. So as a director or as a new operator, it's important to make that distinction. It's two separate processes, yep. but they're both important. Yep. They do play off of each other, right? The more I open this up, the more I lose my color. So you wanna, they, they play off each other, but they're two different you know, digital processes. Cool.